Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on a Beam NG Drive with three more cars tackling the American Descent. It's been a little while actually since we have done this for various reasons, but we've got some interesting cars. We start with a Barstow. This though, the kind of desert racer style version. So big off-road suspension, big off-road wheels, and hopefully plenty of speed. Now I can't have this on the control wheel that I use for the majority of cars, much like with the trucks, with the way this car is built, set up, configured, etc. They don't really work because yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work on the car at all. Uh, so it does have to run on these. They are still off-road tyres, so it should be fairly comparable. It is rear-wheel drive, mind, which... Uh, not the most... I say not the most helpful down here. With the exception of the Formula 1 car, of course, all the top of the leaderboard. As you would expect when racing on dirt, at a technical dirt circuit like this, uh, all-wheel drive has been the way to go. Hopefully this can still go fairly, fairly quickly, uh, if we have any rear-end grip at all to speak of. Uh, Basto, Basto, please no, no, like, 30 mile an hour slideies is not really going to be conducive to a quick time. But, you know, <laughs> you know it is uh, it is what it is. Uh-oh, we're going to be really bouncy over here. How are we going to manage to kill a lot jumps uh, sideways and almost out of... Con I thought for sure we were about to go off the course there. I, I did think for sure we were going to go off the course. Oh, we've gone around at a later point anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kill all the jumps we were quite out of control across. Did amazingly recover all of it. However, yeah, we were, there was too little control going on through all of that. So what are the unique characteristics of the Barstow that I'm not sure whether we're going to see affected or not in all of this? Is its glass drive shaft notorious for breaking under, well, just about every condition? Or we can just bin it at Daytona and go for a clonky, clonky, spinny, roundy session. That's fine as well. You know, I was I was going to make a nice little story about the drive shaft, but we've apparently crashed before we've even had time to talk about that. So, you know what? You can go fall off of a cliff. Are we going to break the drive shaft in this fall? Surprisingly not. Maybe they've upgraded it. Maybe it is no longer a glass drive. Maybe they've put a proper normal drive shaft in it, because normally it would have given up the ghost by now. Radiator's leaking. Um... Okay, please don't move on from the, <laughs> from that, I think. Up towards Panorama we go, quite sideways this time around. Might actually have me set up nicely for the kilolot jumps if we don't get things wrong, like so. Ooh, we got things wrong. Uh, I don't know why I've got on the brakes, because I'm not going to be able to stop it. We're on our roof and fallen. That's... I thought that was going to kill the drive shaft. Apparently not. Uh... <laughs> Apparently the car actually still works somehow in all of that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I thought we'd got Panorama quite nicely. We, it was almost, we were only a sort of few centimetres the wrong side of nicely. Um, but when you are that few centimetres the wrong side of nicely, that's that's what happens. I'm all sorts of trouble over Panorama. I mean, we, we are going to manage it. Oh no, we're not going to lose the back end. Never mind! I thought we were good and we really were then weren't. Really weren't good. Engines broke. Uh, there we go. There's the, the first death of the drive shaft. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the fuel tank's at a funky angle. That's definitely not good. I don't know whether it's rear locking or whether this car is particularly susceptible to steering under braking. Or maybe a combination of the two. However, however... The slightest touch on the steering, and sometimes you've just carried a bit too much speed somewhere, and the back end just lets go everywhere. It's not on power that's the issue, it's well, almost off the power. Oh, we've got the kilowatt jumps wrong! No! Basto! It was going so well, and then it wasn't going so well, and then we're in the river again. Bugger. It really does feel like this has... A huge amount of rear brake, brake bias that is not helping matters whatsoever. I think I might have balls that up at Sebring. I have balls that one up at Sebring. Uh, <laughs> hey, we've managed to end up upside down in the ditch. And many, many, many broke it. Well, I say many broke it. Actually, the car's relatively in one piece, all things considered. Ah, too fast into, into Sebring. I really was, like, fighting for control in all of that. There's more bumps to go. There's more bumps to go as we head around. Don't cut. The final corner on the circuit. And now it is the run towards the caravan or not. 
That's the first time I've hit the finish line. We've not. I've hit the finish line and crossed it. That's the first time I've hit the finish line and not crossed the damn thing. That was very dumb. Well done, me. I don't think I have disliked the way a car has slowed down as much as I do with this Barstow. I mean, I've driven many different vehicles, some silly, some sensible, down this course, and none of them have I hated trying to get slowed down in the same way that I hate this car. You have probably seen the thumbnail, you will have seen the thumbnail for this video, and you know what will be coming next. I don't know what it's like. However, I'm, I'm, I'm even going to hazard a guess at this stage in the video, like I'm preempting. I, I think it's going to be better, quite frankly. I don't think it can be worse, like it can be worse performance-wise, but I don't think it can be more inconsistent and cause more grief than I'm getting from this, and it's just, we're going to suddenly turn a direction. Whether you're prepared for it, whether you want it to or not, we're going to turn in a direction. I wasn't even steering that time. I was not on the steering whatsoever, and the car just decided it was going to start going left. It's, oh, it's not fun. The, the, <laughs> the trying to slow down in this is so far away from fun. I'm going for short shifting just because I don't want to get any more wheel spin in an awkward place. Uh, now we're going to have, I'm having to try to use the brakes, like the, I'm having to use the rear locking to try and Scandinavian flick my car into some of these corners. That's the issues that we are having with the bar stow. It is not fun. It is not fun. And are we going to get some more wheel spin? We're going to short shift here because I can't be bothered to fight it anymore. <laughs> It's across the line. The caravan has been hit. That is not fun. Like the suspension, the handling wise, I mean, yeah, it's a bit oversteery. It's a bit wheel spinny. If you're a moron, easy to get caught out with that. It's a muscle car. You would expect that. The slowing down and the, the locking and the random steering, the random movements from the car make that barely controllable down that course. And I mean, that's amongst silly vehicles, barely controllable. It has done it, though. If it's not last, I'd be uh, relatively surprised. I mean, there is some acceleration, at least, but, uh, which I've kind of curtailed by short-shifting to, to try and survive. Bring on the next vehicle. I'm not sure whether I want to be pleased about that or not. Yes, up next, we have got a bus. Because why Why wouldn't we be using a bus on a rally stage? Now, I should point out, this doesn't have off-road tyres. This is the drag spec of the bus, the most powerful engine. Uh, it is fitted with drag tyres, and I cannot seem to change those. So, the tyre-wise, probably not going to be massively helpful. I don't have much other choice in the matter at the moment. I'm just going to do the best I can, basically, with a ludicrously noisy insanely noisy, hopefully insanely fast bus. Uh, let's get underway. I mean, it's, it's probably not going to beat a Formula One car, let's be honest down here, but for a bus, I'm kind of hoping that we can set an impressive time. You know, maybe not even come last. The gearbox leaves a little bit to be desired. I will say that much, and I'm not sure how the... Oh, no, the handling's actually quite good when it comes to Hammond's hairpin. The steer... Okay, we might need a little bit of work on our turning points. Uh oh, <laughs> we're definitely gonna need a little bit of work on our turning points. I can do that though. We can we can deal with that. We can we can deal with that. It's a, a bit of damage, just a, a smidge. I should also say this does come with uh, NOS. I'm not going to be using NOS because you know I kind of need some form of control in my. Oh no. Um. Okay, I got too brave. I got, I got a bit too carried away with what I thought might be the level of grip. Um, I'm just glad there's not a whole bunch of gold in my bus. Jeez, up to 60 miles an hour, which again, for a bus, is not too bad. Uh, kilolot jumps and panorama. Oh, panorama. We're not even going to get to kilolot jumps this time. Panorama's got us. Um... I'm not looking forward to the kilolot jumps, I'm going to be honest with you. I have a sneaky suspicion they're probably not going to be kind at all. We didn't even make it that far. Whoops. Sebring is unlikely to be that entertaining either. Uh, we are better off than we have been previously, trying to get the bus to actually touch the ground so that we can go forward. Uh, now this hairpin, can we chuck it in with some... Oh no. Okay. 
Oh, uh, we have amazingly just about got that one. Oh, we're not going to make that corner, though. Uh, <laughs> right, we're going to have to be real careful with that hairpin. That's quite a nasty one. That's quite, quite a nasty one indeed. Well, as you might possibly have guessed, the length of the bus, yeah, that causes some issues going down this course. It causes some quite big issues going down this course. Now, the fact that it's got quite a good amount of steering lock helps with those issues uh, a little bit, and the fact that I can try and use the bus bottoming out to help it turn around slightly, uh, helps at some of the hairpins. I'm taking a little bit sneaky lines in places. Uh, it's it's very much a case of I'm doing all I can here just to try and get this thing to fit down the course. The killer lot jumps are terrifying. However, they are, quite frankly, the least of my problems. We might lose some bodywork bits. I don't really care about that. Uh, we lose a lot of time through these corners just by having to be so very slow. If we're going to get around these corners, I've got to be so slow uh, that, uh, yeah, we lose any chance of setting a blisteringly quick time. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, again, we can do it about 20 miles an hour uh, through the corners. We have kind of got the steering lock to get away with it. Um, but, of course, that does mean going slowly through the turns, but it's the only real way we're going to do it in any sort of controlled manner and any <laughs> any sort of manner in which my bus is vaguely on the on the road, shall we say. Yeah, I've got to be very careful through those. Even trying to take like a shortcut line through that, you end up hitting all the rocks down there, which won't help the bus turn. At least we are around the final corner, and we can launch the bus. Oh, please get back in a straight line. There we go. We can launch the bus. The caravan. The caravan is... is, is not going to survive that one. The bus does not care one bit about a caravan. Um, I don't think it made any difference to the bus's speed whatsoever there. Uh, wow. Uh, the bus did not care about the caravan. Oh! Catch the wheel! <laughs> caravan destruction was good. Driving down the uh, rally stage, funnily enough, didn't really work for the bus. It, it didn't really work. The tyres probably didn't help matters too much. The fact that it's a bloody bus uh, also doesn't really help matters. There was some acceleration, some decent speeds to be had with it because of the drag spec and the ridiculous engine. However, far too difficult to use it. Expected, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I suspect this will not have set a blistering time, but you never know. I live in hope and everything. Well, I think the only vehicle that could possibly follow up from a bus going down our rally stage is a Dodge Viper. This, the ACR version of the vehicle, is on the proper control wheels, has got some proper off-road tyres. It is rear-wheel drive, which again, isn't the greatest for traction. But I am hoping that uh, the car should have plenty of grip, although we will have to wait and see really how it goes I'm again not expecting this to challenge a Formula 1 car, it's not going to have that level of downforce but it might stand a chance of being one of the quicker rear wheel drive cars to go down here if it has control if I have control I've managed to bin it immediately too eager on the throttle kill a lot jumps I am a little bit nervous of I mean it's not it's a track-based car that's not really designed for flight. Oh, it's broken many things in terms of bodywork. However, oh, we're all a little bit skittish and slithering. And around we go with the Dodge. Might have lost a front bumper slightly. Um, oh, and we lost all of the tyres. We will actually get it back on the course. Yeah, the kilowatt jumps aren't going to be fun with this car. They are not going to be fun at all. I really want to stop the car from oversteering. You lose so much time uh, down here. Certainly with a rear-wheel drive car on a course like this, when it starts sliding around, you can lose so much time. Just not being able to get the power, not being able to get forward momentum. Uh, that's a nasty clonk across the kilowatt jumps. I think I might have bent a wheel in uh, in all of that one, quite possibly. Oh, I've definitely bent a wheel now. Uh <laughs> I think I bent, yeah, I think I bent the front wheel across the kilowatt jumps, and as we went to turn into the uh, the next corner, got a little bit too much speed, and then we very definitely bent a rear wheel. Uh, it does still drive, surprisingly, but uh, that's, yeah, quite a buckled right-hand side of a car. 
uh, in towards the next hairpin we go. Gingerly does it on the power out the other side. Now we can... Nope. Not really. Oh, no. Oh, I thought I got away with that. We didn't. <laughs> you want to chuck it a bit sideways through Sebring to try and mitigate the bumps, which I did. I got that all very, very well. The problem is, is I tried to put any power down on the exit. I just couldn't get the car to come back in the right direction. So we ended up, ended up not going well. I have to say, we haven't been having big, spectacular crashes with the Viper. Not like we did with the Barstow, not like we did with the bus, or that we have done with many high-powered rear-wheel drive cars in the past. The Kilolot jumps are being mean to it in a different way, and I think perhaps after today's episode of driving lunatic cars, I'm actually now quite relieved to have a vehicle with grip, have a vehicle with sensible braking performance. Uh, it's nice, you know, it's, it's it's definitely the best car I've driven today. Uh, the Kilolot Jumps almost claimed us. In fact, that was the smoothest I've landed across the Kilolot Jumps, uh, with certainly with this car, and again, perhaps all day again. Now, can we be neat and tidy through these next corners? I think I might need to, I think I'd be better off actually with a little bit of short shifting in this car. Again, it's just to stop the huge amount of unwanted oversteer. I've tipped that in too much, have I? No, we recover it. That's actually how we want to take Sebring. Ideally, one more hairpin to go. Uh, can we get it around here? A little bit of rear uh, moving around, but nowhere near as bad as the Barstow again. Struggling to find a way to get onto that power. Now, through Don't Cut, we, well, cut it a little bit, but we do get away with it. We cut it just about survivable amounts. Here we go. Run out of that final corner is across the line. Good amount of speed, actually, into the caravan. The Viper a little bit poorly. Uh... <laughs> from eating a caravan. Oh no, we got chewed up with doors. I think we might have done. Uh, we were taking the bathroom with us, I think. Um, and bits of the kitchen. No, just now, now it's... Oh, we've got... We've, we've freed the bathroom from our Viper. And that is not a sentence that is uh, <laughs> regularly said. Yeah, I mean, it, it's as you would expect from a rear-wheel drive high-powered track car down there. Uh, we had a very, very nice line over the kilolot jumps there, amazingly taking no damage whatsoever. Got to be very, very, very careful with the throttle in this car. Unbelievably careful because it will dump all of that power into wheel spin and into a big sideways moment and often off a cliff or just pointing the wrong direction. Uh, with a little bit of care, though, perfectly drivable down that course. And I think it, it should, theoretically at least, go close to that, uh, that pro car. Similar sort of vehicles and potentially similar sort of times. But... Who knows? Well, I say who knows. You'll find out in about a second or so. So, on to the leaderboard. And it has not been a massively fast week, this one. The ACR Viper, that goes into a 23rd place, a 17.5. It is there or thereabouts in terms of the, I guess, expected time, the usual times for the, the rear-wheel drive road-going cars. Perhaps a little slower than I was expecting. Um, I did think it might be challenging the, sort of the Pazima Pro car, I guess up as a 115, a little further up the leaderboard. That's a crowded area, that part of the table, and yeah, the Viper struggled a little bit in terms of time. Not quite sure where it was lost, but uh, yeah, it was with that. The Barstow was not good. A 123.4, despite being an off-road orientated vehicle, the braking issues with that were tremendous, and it showed in the time. And the bus, well, I mean, that's expected, really. Let's face it. The bus at the bottom of the table, a 146.7, is uh, yeah, a fair way of the way. It kind of saves the Barstow a little bit in that the Barstow won't be in last place. That, that's, I guess the Barstow is quite grateful for the drag bus. Yeah, giant bus on a very narrow rally stage, always going to 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 be problematic, shall we say. That, though, is going to be it for this video. As ever, I shall link all of the mods used in the description, so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.